What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and just about a week from the release of the iPhone 8, 7S, and 7S Plus, I wanted to talk to you guys about the latest information we have on them. We actually have the final names, more component leaks, more feature leaks, very interesting stuff uh, that has not been talked about before in this video. So let's get into that last bit before the final release here in just a week. Now I wanted to start off with this video. So apparently an iPhone 8 has been shown actually working, like a working prototype in the wild, and of course, it has to be released in super blurry, super grainy, and very dark, hard to discern detail video. Now, is it real? Most likely not. As in the corner, you can see that one of the rounded corners on the top doesn't match the other. The animations don't really match up with iOS 11s. They're slow. They're not very responsive. So based on those deductions, I can probably discern this is not real. A good attempt though at a fake iPhone 8 working video. Now, next up, I wanted to talk about the naming of the iPhone 8, 7S Plus, and 7S. Apparently, that is not what they will be called. There is a new confirmed final naming scheme. So for a while, while I personally have questioned the whole naming scheme of the iPhone 8, 7S, and 7S Plus, I personally didn't think it made too much sense because it made one feel inferior to the other because 7 is less than 8 and people don't want to be using a product that's inferior to the biggest and best, even though it's using the same processor speed-wise. So there are several companies, uh, case vendors, that have spoke to 9to5Mac and clarified that those names are not going to be the real deal. Internally, their SKUs for the iPhone and names have changed from the 7S series Series and 8 to iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone Edition. And these aren't just some tiny companies, these are actually big case vendors that sell a lot of product and they've actually produced packaging, you know, everything that reflects this change, which makes it seem very, very significant and credit worthy. I just wanted to take a moment to realize this change. What does it mean for the lineup? The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus does make sense. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus will be a significant upgrade. You know, in this case, I'm talking about 7S and 7S Plus. It'll have wireless charging, glass back, a new color in there as well, the blush gold. So it is going to be a significant upgrade. Maybe it will warrant going from seven to eight. But what about iPhone edition? What is it an edition of? Are they gonna call it the 10th anniversary edition? Uh, just edition doesn't really make sense to me personally. I think it should have been called iPhone Pro because it would reflect the biggest and best in its segment, much like the iPads and the MacBook series. They all have a Pro line. And then the basic is just called MacBook and iPad. So why not do the same to the iPhone? This is why iPhone edition doesn't really make sense. Even though Apple did that to the Apple Watch, uh, with the Apple Watch Edition. It's it's more of a pro product that not everyone's going to get. So I personally think they should have advertised it as that. But in any case, the new iPhone will be called the iPhone Edition. This will be the iPhone 8 Plus, and this will be the iPhone 8. Very interesting naming scheme, but this is apparently confirmed by several independent case vendors, and they're all saying the same thing. And here's something I didn't think I'd talk about again, but it keeps surfacing. Why? The iPhone 8 with the fingerprint sensor on the back has surfaced once again again in an official Apple case leak. This is the leather case. As we can see, it looks pretty genuine, but we already know there are fakes of these, even for the iPhone 7 and below. So there's no reason why this couldn't be faked as well. But in any case, in this video, an employee is trying to take video of this iPhone case and hides it when someone walks in. Gives it a little authenticity there. But I just thought that was funny. This is most likely fake, not genuine. But for whatever reason, this design is still not disappearing, still here, despite the fact that Apple leaked the official iPhone 8 design a while ago. And another sketchy leak from Weibo, courtesy of Slash Leaks, has shown a alternate naming scheme for the new iPhone to be called iPhone 7S, iPhone 7S Plus, and then iPhone X, basically going against everything we've heard in that last report. Also, that report says there will only be two sizes, 128 and 256 gigabytes, which is again contradicting it, but then again, I don't really believe this, so I just wanted to throw that in. It's literally just a picture of a text document that could easily be doctored by anybody. And also in the same report from 9to5Mac, the case vendors confirmed that the wireless charging in the iPhone 8 will be at a reduced rate. And we heard about this in the last video. It'll be at 7.5 watts instead of 15 of the current competitors right now. But they said it'll still work in many QI equipped areas, much like Starbucks, where you can put it on a table with a QI mat and it'll begin charging there. And the last bit that they included in this report is about the durability of the iPhone 8. So what kind of glass it will have? And it will have Gorilla Glass 5, which is very great news. That's the industry standard, the best you can get 
get on a device right now. You can drop it from five feet and 80% of the time your phone will survive. So seeing that on an all glass design iPhone 8 and 7S series, or man, this is gonna get confusing with the naming scheme, the iPhone edition and iPhone 8 series is going to be a great sign because those are gonna be dropped and now that they have more glass, you wanna make sure it's more durable as well. This coupled with a better IP68 water resistance rating is really gonna make this thing quite indestructible. And by that, I mean it'll just be more indestructible than the current 7 and 7 Plus. And more details have been found in the HomePod firmware concerning the iPhone 8 by Steve TS. So the power button, and we heard about in the last video that it'll be easier to press than the current iPhone 8, and that's the only reason for it, but that's not the case. In the actual HomePod firmware, you will be able to long press the power button and activate Siri with it. That was actually directly referenced in the HomePod code. So that led to a theory by the developer. Is the power button going to replace the current home button on the iPhone 8 with functionality? Then I helped BR actually dug further and found another functionality of the power button, and that's to be the shutter button in the camera. So on the iPhone 8, when you're taking a picture, you know, it's not gonna be comfortable with the lens down here, you pressing the volume buttons here. No, it's more natural to do it like this. So it only makes sense for Apple to actually add that functionality into here to take a picture with a button very, very simply, much like a point and shoot right here. So I think that's awesome. Now that suggests two things. Either Apple really will replace the home button with the power button, or it will be adaptive and be able to change based on what you're doing in the phone. And that's why one user on Twitter actually predicted Apple put the shutdown button into the settings in iOS 11. So the software shutdown will be there, but the actual power button we're used to will be used for different purposes. And Vinny Agueskin actually posted that Taptic Engine 3 will be happening on the iPhone 8. It's already a generation two with the current iPhone 7 and 7 Plus where it got much more distinct, stronger. And I think from here on, that's the only improvement we're going to see. It'll be more responsive, actually have a faster response time, as well as just being overall more more noticeable, more powerful, because there will be no physical home button on the device and you wanna simulate that feeling instead of being all virtual with your device. So Apple will be improving to generation three of the Taptic engine. And actual components have leaked of the lightning port and the speaker of the iPhone 8. I actually tried really, really hard to find a difference from the iPhone 7 Plus one and I mulled over it. It looked like the same part until I noticed one little detail. At the top, the lines are slightly different. That's all I found. Now this thing is supposedly supposed to be much more prominent, a stronger speaker, both this one and the one in the earpiece. So you're gonna get a better stereo sound out of the iPhone 8, but I, I couldn't really find any physical differences besides that. Oh, and this one is actually really cool. So from the developer Rambo, who shared a lot of the videos from the last video, showing the dock running on the iPhone 8 from the iPad, he's showing us now the control center and app switcher from the iPad running on the iPhone 8. And this is in a simulation. So he said that he couldn't get the control center to show up, but the app switcher your cards work perfectly. And there is the dock. I think it looks really, really cool. So this is probably how the iPhone 8 will work. It feels completely natural with the gestures and much like in the rumor predicted earlier, those are not overlaying app switcher cards. They are independent pages which you can swipe through and click on just like on an iPad. If you guys remember back in the day, going from an iPhone 3GS to the iPhone 4, you had to wait for a bunch of apps to get updated to support the retina display. Everything else was blurry, not sharp. And then going from an iPhone 4S to an iPhone 5, you had to wait for apps to support the longer screen. Now the same thing is going to be happening with the iPhone 8. Because of the longer elongated display, you will have bars at the top and bottom, according to Steve TS, unless you update the app. So for the first few days, maybe even a couple weeks, many of your favorite apps will be looking weird on the iPhone 8, so just be prepared for that. And a very interesting side effect of the iPhone 8, hidden within the HomePod code, the developer also found that the iPhone 8 will not be getting the menus from the iPhone 7 Plus in landscape mode. So if you go into settings, you get that iPad-like menu where it splits in two. Now you won't be getting that on the iPhone 8 because the display is not getting wider and the code basically says that that will not be happening. And from Vanya Geskin, here are a couple apps, Twitter and Instagram, and how they could look on the longer iPhone 8 display. So with the lack of the virtual home button, you get that little bar on the bottom. I think it looks pretty slick and you get more room for your content there. Overall, I think it works very well. 
Now, the final pricing and storage sizes for the iPhone 8 have once again been confirmed by Vania Geskin. Citing a friend who knows a friend in Apple, he has actually confirmed that the iPhone 8 will be coming in 64, 256, and 512 gigabytes at the same price points we talked about in the last video. So $999 for the entry-level model and going up to $1,199 for the 512 gigabyte model. Now, ET News, citing industry sources, is actually saying that the iPhone next year will be coming in a 6.46 inch display version. So 6.5 inch display iPhone 9 in 2018, they're saying. They're working with Samsung to produce these displays right now. And this would essentially be the iPhone 8 Plus version or whatever they end up calling it, which is actually perfectly lining up with an earlier rumor that said in the code of the HomePod, there would be a 6.5 inch iPhone as well. Now, Huawei has released a new chip, the Kirin 970. And that's not something I would usually share with you in these videos, but Huawei claims that it will outperform both Samsung's and Apple's latest chips, likely referring to the A11 to be used in the iPhone 8 and then the 7S and 7S Plus series. So this thing actually has a dedicated chip for AI tasks that was rumored to happen on the iPhone as well. So they beat Apple to the punch on that one. Apple's is to be called the neural engine. It'll handle Siri and all artificial intelligent tasks, AR, VR capabilities, stuff like that. Also, this chip supposedly has half the power draw. So processor competition in smartphones is finally starting to get serious. And if Huawei's claims are true, that's going to be quite a crazy test for me to perform. I'm very, very curious to see if it'll be true coming later in October. Now, we actually have an inside look at the Steve Jobs Theater from the Apple Park campus being set up in preparation for the iPhone 8 event. Actually leaked some inside photos. I'm sure Apple would not be happy about this. It's quite interesting to see where a lot of people are going to be meeting to share this exciting news that's going to be coming to us in just about eight days here so guys i'm so excited i mean to see everything come together personally my favorite new feature is going to be the promotion display the improved water resistance wireless charging of course hopefully the camera will be just as good but that huge wraparound display is going to be incredible guys i seriously cannot wait and next year if we see a larger 6.5 inch as well that's just going to be on another level anyways guys stay tuned just a week to go here if i have anything else to share with you i will peace